back to The Lincoln Project. I'm your host, Reed Galen. Today, I'm joined by Mary Pat Hector, the CEO of RISE, an organization that builds student-led advocacy campaigns, promotes increased access to higher education, and strengthens students' political power through youth mobilization. Mary Pat is a native of Atlanta, a proud graduate of Spelman College, and a current graduate student at Georgia State University. Mary Pat, welcome. Hi, Reed. Thank you so much for having me. No, absolutely. Thank you. You, uh, As I said right before we went on the air, um, it's your generation that uh, saved our bacon in 2022 and will probably very much be at the forefront of doing it again. Um, but before we get into Rise, the work uh, that you're doing uh, in you know the, the get out the vote, the voter education perspective, let's talk a little bit about you. So uh, at the age of 18, you were already advising then President Barack Obama on criminal justice reform. And then at the age of 19, you ran for office uh, in a city neighboring Atlanta. So you didn't waste much time. So give us a little sense of how it, 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 you know, just, you know, not even at the end of your teenage years, you decided to get so involved in public policy and then ultimately politics. Sure. So originally when I really began my organizing journey, it was really centered on advocacy and around issues that were directly impacting not only communities of color, but were importantly my community um, issues like gun violence, ways in which we could prevent gun violence in communities of color um, and in the state of Georgia, uh, which is how I got involved in advocacy and organizing. But it wasn't until I was in college that I understood the importance of um, not only just advocacy, but policy and how those things work interchangeably. Um, and so that's why in 2016, uh, which was my very first presidential election, um, I decided that I was also going to run for office and put my name on the ballot following um, the 2016 outcome of that election. Yeah, and I can only imagine that. Uh, well, first and foremost, being on the ballot is a whole different ball game, right? You have to actually you're putting your name before the voters um, and hope that you know you are you are there. And oftentimes, you know, candidates uh, with the best of intentions are left wanting. But I think that there's there is great value and worth in the experience and the crucible, right? That you have to go through in that in that process. So tell us a little bit about like, did you like being a candidate? Well, Reed, I will tell you that I did not enjoy being a candidate. <laughs> Fair it, enough. It actually gave it. me so much respect for individuals that run for office, um, you know, no matter what their their ideological beliefs are or, you know, what party they tend to represent. It, it gave me so much respect for just the process and like all of the things that you go through, um, you know, the mud slinging, the, the, the sleepless nights, the knocking on doors. Um, the raising money, you know, it's very, very difficult and tough time. Um, but since that moment, I vowed, like, not only would I support other young people who run for office, but beyond that, I would support young people um, who want to be civically engaged, which I now have the opportunity to do that in a different way as a CEO of RISE. So let, let's talk about Rise. That's a great segue. So, you know, the sense I get um, and it's so it's, you know, you will appreciate and this probably will not surprise you, um, Mary Pat, that there are a lot of old, mostly white people that sit around rooms and go, you know, we really got to worry about the youth vote this year. And everyone goes, yeah, rah, 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 yeah, harumph, harumph, harumph. Um, but I mean, I think we think that's true. But also, you know, I, you know, I have children that are younger than yours, but your generation, Generation Z, younger millennials, it's it. You all are a much different cohort, not just because of your age, but I think also, at least again, as an observer, you all came of age are coming of age in an in an era of total connectivity and total information um, so that when I was your age, even now, or your age, when you were, you know, first going to college, right? Like the internet was a thing, but like nobody knew what to do with it. Does that make sense? You all are digitally digital natives for lack of a better way to put it. So tell us a little bit about with my rambling preamble, how you see younger voters this year, what and, and what Rise does in particular to make sure that they are as engaged as they need to be. Absolutely. Well, Gen Z voters, uh, 40 million Gen Z voters will be eligible to vote in 2024. Forty five percent of that 40 million will be young people of color, Asian Americans, wow. Latin ex voters, African American young voters. Um, and so here we do have an opportunity to really save our democracy because the truth is it is teetering. 
um, in the balance. But that's why it's important for organizations like RISE to be talking and touching young people in person now. In 2020 and 2022, data showed that um, only half of young people were even contacted by a civic organization or a campaign, which means most of the information that they got was from social media or what they saw or what they heard and not based off of anyone actually talking to them. Um, and so with our organization, we find value in not just running social media campaigns, which is what a lot of organizations like to do when they're reaching young voters, but actually speaking to young people, talking to them, touching them three to five times leading up to the election. Um, you know, there, there, there is value in investing and making critical investments in like social media, TikTok, Instagram, but there's also a value in showing up. Gen Z voters, they don't like things that feel performative. Candidates or campaigns and organizations showing up two to three months on their campuses before an election saying, you know, we want your vote, we care. That is nothing that will swoop them or make them want to vote for you. But when they see an organization that's consistently on their campus, that's consistently in community with them, when they see young people within that organization that are in class with them every day, that are advocating for their students' basic needs, advocating for um, access to higher education within that state for them, then they're more likely to listen to what they have to say and potentially accept resources for them to ensure that they're able to get to the polls on election day. And so that's why our work is extremely critical. Um, because we show up on campuses 365 days a year um, and we ask young people to not only vote, but to join us in educating their communities and being a part of the solution to getting more young people to the polls rather than waiting into the very last minute. Well, and, you know, I want to I want there's wow, there's a lot there. So I want to start with the one of the first things you said, which was I've always found not always, but as I got out of being a, you know, a year in and year out campaign guy myself um, and into more of the independent political space, the reform space, you know, that sort of freedom gives you also a lot of ability to be creative and think about things differently, which is why should we be surprised, Mary Pat, that sometimes our voter participation rates are so low and our voter contact efforts are so ineffectual or inefficient when we don't talk to voters Right. Or potential voters at all, except for 60 days every two years. And then we ask them for the most valuable things civically they can give us. Yeah. Uh, I mean, well, that's why you kind of get the apathy specifically from younger voters that you get. Like older voters have this ideology. It was extremely important. Right. Like, you know, our ancestors fought and died for you to have that right to vote. Well, young people are like, well, what does voting do for me? I have candidates that don't care about the climate. There are candidates who haven't done anything around gun violence prevention. Some of our student organizers, and including myself, were at the University of Las Vegas, Nevada, hosting a RISE University training, doing the recent um, mass shooting that was on that campus that day. Like many of these issues young people are seeing, and they're like, why, why aren't our elected officials doing anything about it? Um, and so they, they, they develop this like disengagement where they feel like, well, maybe voting isn't for me. And it's not maybe voting isn't for you. Maybe it's who is in office isn't for you. And like really understanding the power that you have as a voter and as a person who can even put themselves on the ballot and even run. Um, but like that's the importance of just seeing or believing that in possibilities, so like understanding your power as a student voter, which is what we do within our organization. Like we want young people to recognize the political power that they have as young people and as young voters.